Hey, it's Hudson. We're talking about architectural panoramic photography. I find that often when I'm out in big architectural scenes, I can't quite capture everything that I want in a single frame, even with my widest angle lens. Let's take a look here at, at this image in Istanbul at the Blue Mosque. Uh, you know, this is, this is a famed mosque, one of the most beautiful pieces of architecture uh, in, in the Islamic world. It's right in the heart of the old part of Istanbul in the old city of Constantinople. And as I walked into this entrance square, I, I just was overwhelmed with the size and grandeur of the space, how beautiful it was, and all the mingling of people from locals, you know, going about their daily routine of prayer to, you know, tourists and photographers like me just trying to capture this beautiful piece of architecture. And even with my 14 millimeter lens on full frame kind of backing up where the entrance pillars, these pillars are kind of getting into the frame, I couldn't quite capture the whole scene. Uh, so, you know, I, at that moment, am gonna reach for, for my tried and true panoramic techniques to try to capture the space a little bit wider. And I've been doing panoramas since the days of film. It's, it's really a passion and a specialty of mine. Um, I, I tend to set up in a scene like this, vertically on my tripod, set everything on manual, no auto ISO, no auto white balance. I wanna capture every frame with exactly the same exposure. I'm gonna meter for a bright part of the scene, meter for a dark part of the scene, find the exposure that kind of strikes a balance, uh, and then sweep the camera through with a lot of overlap. I tend to overlap by at least a third for each frame. And in Photo Raw, it's so easy to blend such a captured panorama. Once you have all the component parts here in Browse, all you have to do is select all of them. In this case, we've got nine panoramic images to blend, and click this little pano button on the far right and it's gonna load each of these 36 megapixel files in and create a dialogue for how we want that pano assembled. All right, and so here we are just a couple minutes later, and we've got our Create Panorama dialog box. We have some settings here. We could choose the different types of, of uh, mapping, how it's gonna wind up laying these panoramas out. I find that auto or spherical is what I generally go to. Generally, auto is spherical um, for projection, for a panoramic projection. That's just how it blends the images. Uh, when it comes to the edges, you got several choices. If, if you choose none, it just shows you each of the images and as it was assembled and blended. If you choose crop, crops it down to the smallest or to the largest image it can do without having any blank space, any negative space with those ragged edges of the panorama. Uh, but it doesn't do any distorting of the image. If you choose warp to fill, it'll distort the image and stretch it to kind of fill all those blank spaces that you have with none. And that's often fine in landscapes and you know when you just have a grassy meadow in the foreground and sky in the, in the upper part of the image. But here where we've got straight lines in the image that are getting warped even more than just doing a panorama, a 180 degree panorama, um, I'm gonna avoid that warp to fill and choose just to, to use the crop version. And you can see there's still a little bit of warping going on, but that's partly just a, a function of the fact that you know you can't have a straight line that runs like this when you're doing a 180 degree image. There's gonna be a little bit of warping and, and changing of the world in that panoramic projection. Uh, but pretty darn good. I mean, we've got straight columns, straight minarets. You know, it's, it's doing a really fine job blending these. So then you've got a choice into whether to output a half size file, which is still, you know, a normal large file or that full nearly 12,000 pixel wide image. Uh, I tend to like as many pixels as I can have as high a resolution as possible just to make bigger prints and, and to have more enlargeability. Um, and then whether or not you want the image to open in Browse Developer Effects, I'm gonna just choose to open it in Browse. Adding panoramic metadata, it lets certain viewers like Facebook's panorama viewer allow people to scroll around and kind of look at a different view of the image. It's good for VR goggle apps. It's kind of fun to add that if you choose. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click Save and it's gonna merge all those files. So here we have our finished pano, and it looks so much better. I get so much more of a feeling of that big wide space and the blending of all the people in it. I'm gonna go ahead, toss on one of my autumn style presets. This, this was shot at kind of golden hour with a nice sky, and I know that in my, uh, my fall presets I created for Photo Raw 2018, the golden hour preset tends to work with a scene like this really nicely. 
uh, just throws in some, some finish editing effects and effects um, that kind of make that sky a little more dramatic and enhance that kind of last lights effect on the buildings. So yeah, I mean, if we take a look at this versus what I could capture with a 14 millimeter in the same space, you know, obviously this is unedited, but it's never gonna be as dramatic as this big, wider scene that we're able to get with the panoramic technique. And it's also so much more enlargeable and, and you can print it, good panorama like this, huge. So definitely a trick that I think is very valuable in architectural photography, super easy to assemble in Photo Raw. Uh, if you wanna know more about it, hit me up. I've written a book on simple panoramas and I'm almost done with a book on advanced. So it's a topic I know, I know well and I love dearly. So hit me up anytime to learn more about it.